A lot of times a, a doctor will get a new patient. They're not a new patient. They've been to chiropractors before, but the reason if the doctor doesn't focus on the cause, get to the gut and help to decrease swelling inflammation, they're going to look for another chiropractor with a different technique because they think a new technique is going to help them with their pain. But if you can keep a patient, then they start to order the nutrients and the products through your office. So they stay with you. They stay. So they're never going to leave you because you've, you've been able to handle everything that they came in for. Hi, everybody. Welcome in. Welcome to today's masterclass on Wednesday. Uh, back by popular demand, we have Dr. Todd Singleton here hosting um, today's masterclass about decompression therapy, as you guys can see in front of here. So he's going to take the lead. He's going to um, give you guys a little bit of a background behind um, his profession in decompression therapy, um, kind of give you like a walkthrough of what exactly decompression therapy looks like, how to implement implement that into your practice and how to ultimately deliver that care to your patients. So Dr. Singleton, you have the floor. All right. Thank you, Angie. You know, if you're doing decompression therapy now and colonics at the same time, I don't think you need to do that anymore. No, just messing with you. Just see if you're listening. So I, uh, I'm Dr. Singleton, graduated, graduated 1990 LACC. So back in the 90s, we started with an MD, DC, PT rehab clinic, 75 employees, two clinics, MRI machine. I mean, you think an x-ray machine is cool. Well, wait to have your own MRI machine. You know, we had that thing running like 16 hours a day, doing seven, 800,000 a month in services. You know, we're treating pain management. And, you know, we did decompression. We did unweighting. We had this machine called the new back where patients were strapped in from a harness walking on treadmill, doing different exercises while they're walking or decompressing the spine. This is before the DRX came out. So I noticed that 75% were getting some good results, but the 30% were not. And so I'm going to explain to you what we found of why the 30% were not getting the results. And this kind of started because I created programs for these 30% and to end up helping them get out of pain in conjunction with including this program with doing decompression therapy and a whole industry uh, was born. And since that time, we've trained over 2,500 clinics since 07. And, you know, I spoke at Texas Chiropractic College, got cruise ships all over the world, uh, go speak as doctors, we're going to go on a cruise. And we talked, most of my presentation was about the gut, the microbiome and pain. Uh, Life College down in, in Georgia, Parker, Florida Chiropractic and all that. So we're going to now jump into, let's see here. So in office, you know, everything from ESTEM, whole body vibration. And by the way, on some of these slides that I've done, there's some references on the bottom. And by the way, if you want copies of these slides, just at the, at the end, I'll, I'll give you my contact information and I can send them to you. I mean, different kinds of LED light therapies lasers, the 10, 30 watt laser. Now they have a 60 watt laser with spinal decompression, kind of warm up with the, uh, some lasers, warm up the, uh, the spine right before we put them on the table. Now, years ago, I remember Cox flexion distraction. I had a couple of these and when they came out you got training on it, um, they were pretty cool. You know, whether it was a facet, you know, in, in vacation, um, a distraction for a disc, but these flexion distraction tables really really, really helped a lot. And then the, the spinal decompression came out about, in fact, I remember in 1990, uh, when I was in school in Los Angeles at the Whittier Clinic, uh, they had these tables and an anemometer or anemotor or whatever, they're the tables that would move back and forth. And, and you were strapped in, in leather, in the leather strap. And there was a little dial on the end that would go up to 250 pounds. And so I was actually, I trained on those. So I was actually doing decompression in 1990. So 32 years now. Um, and then these tables come out, you know, the DRX on this, on the right, and then the DTS, and, and then some other me too, you know, decompression tables. It's basically what you wanted, the brains, the computer that, that basically regulate the, the pulling and, and the holding, the relaxation back and forth. So the body doesn't, you know, tighten up their muscles. So there's this, and then there's also this. Patients will come in and say, hey, I have an inversion table at home. Will that work? 
I'm like, well, not really, as far as if you're trying to focus on L5S1 and the lumbar spine or the cervical. So, but it's not going to hurt somebody. And uh, some of them, you get upside down, you can't get back up. So you need to have somebody at home to help you upright. So where do we start? Well, chiropractic care. So back pain may also, you know, result in neuropathy. Any type of condition or injury that compresses the nerve that can lead to neuropathy in the feet. A herniated disc is a good example of back injury, of a back injury that can result in neuropathy. Other forms of neuropathic pain that originate in the spine or back include the following. Sciatica or chronic pain that radiates down the leg. Cervical radiculopathy or chronic pain that runs down the arm or failed back surgery or any pain that occurs after surgery and just keeps and persists. Now, can your back again cause neuropathy? Yes, in some severe cases, DDD or DJD can cause nerve problems in the feet. Degenerative disc disease, specifically the lumbar spine, can actually cause nerve pain to radiate into the feet from your spine. You usually call that a grade three. Grade one's to the buttocks, grade two to the knee, and then grade three is down to the foot. In some severe cases, DDD can cause, again, nerve problems. And then you hear some references um, right down the bottom. Numbness, tingling, in your arms and legs, and also cause your leg muscles to become weak. This means that the, the discs damage uh, the, the, the exiting nerve rights. So there's a little chart here that talk about normal, degenerative, bulging, herniated, and thinning discs. And there are reasons why this happens. And I can't wait to show you. Lumbar spinal stenosis. Um, the lower back condition refers to the spinal nerve roots being compressed or choked, which may lead to um, foot pain, numbness, including weakness, numbness or tingling sensations in the foot. This is why older people that you see are hunched over because as they flex over, like they're shopping at a, at a store, they're leaning on the cart. Um, it's because they're taking that pressure off of the, of the posterior st structures, whether it's in the, the facet area or the actual bone spurring in the uh, superior and inferior posterior part of the, 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 the vertebra. And when they're being compressed, it just helps. That's the normal thing that people will do is, is bend forward to take pressure off of that. Neuropathy can also result from any type of pain that compresses or impinges on a nerve. A uh, herniated disc, again, can also cause this. So I just like these pictures uh, to show patients because they, they like pictures. What about the, what's the difference between back issues and neuropathy and sciatica? Basically, neuropathy symptoms usually begin in your feet. And it's usually bilateral, both feet. While sciatica starts in your low back, also sciatica symptoms tend to be more severe in the morning or after a period of rest. And walking around can actually relieve your pain. So if you look at the uh, one on top there, she's walking upright and uh, just a good walking gait, proprioception uh, can help to increase blood flow circulation uh, in, the, in the area and in uh, relaxation. And that can reduce uh, symptoms of uh, uh, sciatica, uh, if it's not too severe. Uh, when the spinal nerves, uh, how do the spinal nerves affect the feet? It's the peroneal nerve, it's a, it's a branch of that sciatic nerve. And they'll actually go in and uh, pediatricians are going to shoot injections, even alcohol. I heard they do alcohol injections. And uh, we've actually done some other things, uh, such as some PRP or some homeopathy or an ozone injections in the feet, which is just a temporary fix. But I do something that's more of a reversal of this as well. Now, how do they find uh, these, these nerves in your legs? Is it true radiculopathy, neuropathy? So what they're doing is they'll do EMG, which um, never had an EMG, but it's, you know, think about sticking a needle in your, your leg and your muscle and then sending an electrical current through it. And then they're testing the time frame. They call it latency. So if normally, if it's supposed to go 100 miles an hour from your low back to your foot, maybe it's only going 75 miles an hour. So the slower it goes, then they know there's something that it's impeding the, uh, the, uh, the nerve flow. Or how about an MRI? That can show muscle quali uh, quality and size, detect fatty replacement of muscle tissue, can rule out tumors, herniated disc, or other abnormalities that may be causing back pain and or neuropathy. In fact, sometimes when I go to the gym, you all see people and you look at their calves and you'll see one calf is smaller than the other calf. And you know, somewhere upstream 
there's an issue in their lower back and that actually affects the uh, atrophy uh, parts of the muscle in the leg. What about a nerve biopsy? Well, that sounds fun. You know, removing and examining a, a sample of nerve tissue, serious? Uh, or a skin biopsy, uh, removing a thin skin sample to examine nerve fiber ending, show damage in a small, you know, they do this because they can bill insurance companies for it. Do they need to do this? No. You know, after so many years of having an MRI machine, it's like, do I need, do I really need to MRI this pair, patient? But, you know, 60% of MRIs that are, um, this show a bulging disc are asymptomatic. So even though you see something, you know, but a lot of insurance companies, if, you know, to rule, to, to, for medical necessity, you have to kind of show that there is uh, an organic lesion there before you can continue with rehab services that we were doing. Blood tests, you know, blood tests can test, you know, from uh, diabetes, liver, vitamin deficiencies, any other metabolic issues. Um, so a lot of people are still doing functional medicine in the body. So here is my mojo, the gut microbiome joint connection impl impl implications in osteoarthritis and the spine. Now, this is fun. If you, if you want to look into this, Google things like microbiome, DJD, or osteoarthritis, or rheumatoid arthritis, or even knee pain, microbiome, and anything you're dealing with. So you can show, I do this right in the front of the patient. They're here with their knee pain, and I, I'll Google this, and I'll show them studies that talk about their gut. We're going to go through more in their gut. What's going on? Gut inflammation and microbiome and spondyloarthritis. You know, basically, the microbiome, this gut, the stomach, small intestine, you know, we're only absorbing 30, 50 percent of the food we eat. And you want the microbiome on a scale from like one to 10, you want it to be a 10. Because if it's a 10, everything else in the body is a 10. And I'm going to show you a study in here that this shows you the stomach microbiome is exactly a mirror image to the disc microbiome. That's why you got to do nutritional protocols when you're doing decompression or else you're not doing the patient any good. So the pathogenesis of gut inflammation and SPA could be explained by two factors, overactivation of immunological cells and altered gut microbiome. In SPA, the gut microbiome could emerge as a diagnostic and prognostic marker of disease, like the precursor, the precursor of DJD in the body. Modulation of gut microbiome was slated to have a therapeutic potential as well. SPA is a chronic inflammatory disease involving joints and the spine, not just the spine, but the joints. Bowel inflammation is common, which may be classified as acute or chronic. Chronic gut inflammation is most common in SPA patients with axial involvement as compared to those presenting with peripheral involvement alone and increase the advancement of neuropathy. Remember I did a program last month on neuropathy, if you want to watch that. Ongoing studies aim to find similar correlation between gut microbiome and osteoarthritis. The association between disruption in the microbiome host balance and several elements has raised the question of how the association between the microbial host balance and certain ailments can be influenced to treat away. In fact, there's a doctor here uh, that I'm an uh, orthopedic surgeon, a friend of mine, and I was talking to him. And of course, they don't get a lot of training in in, in nutrition. And so from what I taught him, he actually started to, he's a, he, he does knee, knees and hips. And so he has his patients uh, change their total diet up before a month before surgery. And he says, he can't believe the, the, when they, when he gets in there, the tissue looks so much healthier and their post-operative is like 10 times better. And so he's real excited about having his patients, you know, get their gut healthy because he's seen the difference. However, deficiencies in this complex interaction may also disturb the symbiotic relationship and cause pathology. The gut microbiome has been the focus of much research because imbalances in the microbiome known as dysbiosis have been linked to numerous pathologies, including arthritis, not just degenerative, but also rheumatoid. Look at this. Can bacteria cause osteoarthritis? Yeah, bacteria in the gut known as the gut microbiome could be the culprit behind arthritis and joint pain that plagues people who are obese. According to a new study published in JCI Insight, osteoarthritis, a common side effect of obesity, is the greatest cause of disability in the U.S., affecting 31 million people. And that just, that's just going up. 
gut microbial is involved in the initiation and progression of inflammation driven disease and microbial dysbiosis has been emerged as a hidden risk factor inter, um, inducing the production of in pro-inflammatory cytokines and bacterial metabolites which may boost the pathophysiological me uh, mechanisms of osteoarthritis. So cytokines, you know, we heard about a lot about the cytokine storm um, recently with uh, COVID in the lungs. Osteoarthritis is a debilitating disease leading to joint degeneration, inflammation, pain, and disability. Despite efforts to develop disease modifying treatment, the only accepted and available clinical approaches involve palliation. So basically they're gonna give you something to here, just take this. This will kind of keep keep it down. Medications, NSAIDs, all these things to lower the pain threshold so people can kind of sleep at night. But it doesn't reverse anything. It doesn't fix anything. Although many factors contribute to the development of OA, the gut microbiome has re recently emerged as an important pathogenic factor in OA in initiation and progression. This presentation examines the literature to date regarding the link between the gut microbiome and osteoarthritis. Gut inflammation. So if our gut is inflamed, then everything else is inflamed. Improper digestion of food significantly increases inflammation and decreases absorption of nutrients in your body, causing malnutrition. The human body is a superorganism which thousands of microbial genomes connect. So if you look at this, if there's inflammation, look, inflammation is going to cause all these other issues from cancer, cardiovascular, Alzheimer's, pulmonary arthritis, autoimmune, neurological, and diabetes. Remember, it's because of food that people eat out of a box or bag. Now let's try some marijuana. They passed it in California and other states. Now they, I think they passed it in Utah. Like all drugs, this drug also had a side effect. Back in the day, medical doctors prescribed this, but it went out of favor, but it's now back in. Benefits are because, you know, these opi opioids are just killing so many people and they become addicted. So let's try some marijuana to help them get some relief from pain. As in any drug prescribed, marijuana covers up the symptoms uh, and, you know, but it really doesn't fix anything. The big problem is it strips the body of glutathione, the body's master antioxidant. And this is the reason for in the 1960s, you know, druggies who looked emancipated and out of touch with reality. You know, just go watch a movie of Cheech and Chong or something, you know, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, here's something that I, I wrote. I wrote this article, Six Consequences of Untreated Back Pain that will cost you more money down the road. So if you're seeing a patient for decompression, um, you're gonna be able to request this and I'll send this to you. So you can actually, I have printed out and I give it to the patient when they come in for their first evaluation. And then I highlight some of these areas uh, of, of what we're dealing with. So, you know, whether you're charging four, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars, whatever it may be for spinal decompression, um, that's cheap compared to if they don't do something about it down the road. So these are some studies, but the one I like, look at the bottom one. Um, basically, they found a microbiome in discs, just like the one that exists in your gut. Protective bacteria were more abundant in normal discs, and bad bacteria were more abundant in degenerative discs. So I actually have the little models of the good disc height, and then over here, a degenerative disc height. And I kind of show the patient, this one has good bacteria. So this person would have good bacteria of their gut. This person, we got to get their gut healthy because look what happened to their disc because of their gut. So I show that to them. And again, if you want to copy that, just let me know. Sleep, exercise, and inflammation. So maintaining good sleep, um, good sleeping habits, you know, can reduce inflammation because when you sleep, the body goes into parasympathetic and is trying to heal. Your body's trying to heal. If you, that's why when people, if they never sleep, you know, you basically, you, look, you die. Um, and then you want to do some kind of an exercise. If even if just walking, you know, 15, 30 minutes a day, because any walking ambulatory increases lymphatic flow, blood flow, and that can help in not just reducing some arthritis symptoms, blood flow circulation, but also psychological. It's kind of just get out there and move and think and get your body moving. Let's talk about some lifestyle change. So the solution, the pain relieving program is amazing because it addresses any nutritional deficiency a person may have. It gets the body to start digesting and assimilating food better. Remember, it's not what we eat, it's what we can digest and then assimilate. It also allows the body to start healing from the inside out and, decrease, and uh, decreases the degenerative process of the nervous system and its discs. So if you remember from one to 10, if your microbiome's a 10, 
then all the joints in your body are going to be a 10 and you're going to have that. That's why when I did this 20 year, years ago, uh, as I was changing the, the person's gut microbiome, they were getting out of pain. So I had all this therapy. I had everything, work hardening, work conditioning. And I wasn't having them do any of that. I had them do this nutritional program and they got out of pain. I'm thinking, what the heck? So then I started seeing more and more of this. And I'm like, okay, there's something here. By combining clean supplements and a good eating program with hands-on treatment, we're accelerating healing and reversing the degeneration process that has already set in. We are essentially giving our patients their life, well-being, health, and happiness back. I love this because, um, you know, I sold the clinic a few years ago, and I was traveling around speaking, and then COVID happened, 2020. No one's traveling, so I'm in the office now two days a week seeing this, seeing decompression neuropathy patients and weight loss. Um, remember, diet is linked to inflammation, a link to metabolic arthritis, rheumatoid, and or osteo, and also affects cardiovascular disease. An abundance of vegetables, fruit, legumes, and clean GMO-free grains have shown anti-inflammatory effects when compared to a, the typical North American diet, the SAD diet. Uh, this, is, this has been effective in decreasing inflammation. And as much as you can, try to get organic. Um, wash them good. Wash them off. Wash your vegetables and your fruit. Um, but it also, some studies are showing that um, too much fruit, too much fructose, has the same kind of effect as sugar, sugar. So just not too, too much fructose, you know, sugar, uh, I'm sorry, fruit, and the good greens. Like I make a smoothie every morning. I put a big handful of spinach in just to get some good greens, phytonutrients, because the more plant-based you can eat, the actual more fiber is in that food. And the fiber causes the food track time to slow down. And that allows the bacteria better and more bacteria to start to grow in your gut to repair what's been hammered out. If someone wishes for good health, one must first ask oneself if he is ready to do any with reason for his illness, only when it's possible to help him. Illness do not come upon us out of the blue. They are developed from daily sins against nature. When enough sins have accumulated, illness will suddenly appear. Hippocrates, many, 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 many years ago. Look at this. All disease starts in the gut. I mean, how did he know that? Each of the substances of a man's diet act upon his body and change and changes in some way. And upon these changes, his whole life depends. Now, wait a minute. This is the Hippocratic Oath. How come they don't read this stuff, right? How come the medical allopathic field, they don't understand this? We also offer programs, you know, for like knee pain, back pain, neck pain. We have a machine called the Tesla Max. Any of this information you want, just let me know. This, this is one I use for, uh, you can use for pain management, but for neuropathy particularly. These leg wraps are developed by a biochemist from UCLA Medical Center and for, uh, for neuropathy. Red LED-like therapy, spinal decompression, cold laser. There's cold laser and there's 10, 30, and 60 watt uh, laser. Uh, active therapeutic movement, kinesio tape. We K-tape everybody after their treatment vibratory massage, and then, like I said earlier, ozone, homeopathy, or PRP injections. Some states, you can do that. As a chiropractor here in Utah, we can by tra with, with training. Uh, other states, you have to have like a, a nurse practitioner or a PA uh, there doing that. So, so there you go. There's a little bit of breakdown of the Singleton Systems. Thanks for attending, listening, and staying awake this far. There's my, <laughs> there's my number. If you want to, so any of you who want to start on this soon, if you want, I have a 20 day rejuvenation program that I developed for the first 20 days. You put somebody on the decompression table. If you want this, text me your information to the above number. And I will actually send it. You normally have to join our group, uh, Singleton Systems, before you get this information. But I'll actually send it to you, the 20 day rejuve. And then you also can call um, solutions4.com and you can see all the cool things that's happened there. 45 year old company, um, family owned still. It's a doctor's only line. It's not MLM or any, and all that crap. Uh, and then singletonsystems.com if you want to practice analysis, like, hey, let me let me see what you're doing. If you, you can improve here and there, because I do this all the time on Mondays and Wednesdays. And again, text me. For, also, if you want that article on the six consequences of untreated back pain that will cost you more money down the road. So I'm going to need your email and all that. So thank you for listening.
and paying attention. Thanks, Angie. We'd like to thank Angie for the smorgasbord, the food that she sent over to me. Wait, no, she did. <laughs> yeah. Of course, no problem. No problem. Yeah. And we, it's a pleasure having you here, Dr. Singleton. Honestly, um, thank you so much for, um, you know, holding these amazing presentations. They hold a lot of value. And, um, you know, we, we love inviting doctors in to hold presentations. Um, just so, just so, you know, doctors can take something away uh, and implement something into the practice. So if you guys want more tactical information, hopefully we served, um, you know, some information for you guys today to, uh, you know, implement to the practice. But if you want more of like a unique approach, definitely reach out to Dr. Singleton. He's super kind to help you guys out. He's actually helped a couple of our partners out. So I can definitely vouch for him and say that he can offer really good advice in terms of, um, you know, the practice analysis approach. So um, yeah, Dr. Singleton, I was curious for the spinal decompression therapy. I know you've been in practice for a long time, but um, like how many years have you been doing decompression specifically? Uh, 32. 32. And how long have you been in practice? 32. 32. Okay. So yeah. the beginning of time. Nice. Nice. Yeah. And as you guys can tell, like off of the previous masterclasses we've held with him, a lot of it kind of ties back to, um, you know, the health, the gut health, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I've been paying attention. So that gut health is really important. And if, again, if you guys want support, you can always drop a comment down here too. I can communicate with Dr. Singleton if there's something that I think he can help you guys out with. Um, any questions to the group is always available too. One so, thing, yeah. you know, a lot of times uh, a, a, a doctor will get a new patient. They're not a new patient. They've been to chiropractors before, but the reason if the doctor doesn't focus on the cause, get to the gut and help the decrease swelling inflammation, they're going to look for another chiropractor with a different technique because they think a new technique is going to help them with their pain. But if you can keep a patient then they start to order the nutrients and the products through your office, products that they cannot buy on Amazon. So, so you charge, let's say, $5,000 for a service. Mm -hmm. And for the next five, 10 years, you know, they're going to keep continuing buying products through you. These like Solutions 4 I'm talking about. And so they stay with you. They stay. So they're never going to leave you because you've, you've been able to handle everything that they came in for. Right. And it also comes down to, you know, delivering that world class experience that we've talked about a couple of times here. Um, so in combination of really like showing your patients results and then giving them that experience, that care that they look for, um, you're, you're going to keep them forever. And so that's kind of where our job comes in to kind of push that exposure out of your business and your practice to get those patients who are interested in services like yours to come into your practice because they just need that little extra push on the Internet. That's ideally what it's all about. So thank you so much, Dr. Singleton, for the presentation. As always, if again, if anybody has any questions, please post them to the group. Drop in the comments down below. Um, Dr. Singleton, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, and everybody comes on Wednesday. All thank right. You so thank you, guys. See ya. Take care.